Hey, good morning. Uh, it's Doug, and today I'm out here in the scamp. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different. This isn't a full scamp update, uh, but we have made a lot of progress, and there is a full scamp update coming soon. So if you're looking for that, should be out in the next week or two. Uh, but today I wanted to take a moment. I've gotten two separate emails from uh, a couple of people asking about removing cabinetry, and uh, they had some specific questions. So I thought I would make this video and answer both those specific questions and uh, just kind of generally talk about removing the cabinetry from the scamp, the uh, fiberglass cabinets specifically. This video is for Bob and Mark and uh, we appreciate you guys reaching out to us whether it's in the comments of these videos or by email. So our first question was from Bob. He was asking about removing the front um, lower part of the bunk here. He said he was having some trouble getting the bottom sides uh, loosened up. If, if you're thinking about doing this, he said he already had these, but I'll point out how you remove this. There's a plywood strip that's fiberglass to the wall and there are screws going down um, into that plywood all the way around the back. So you drill uh, or remove those and then after you remove those screws then you can drill the rivets. And the rivets are right here in the doorway into the pan. And through the kitchenette door. Um, the kitchen cabinet's obviously gone on this one, but you can see where it sits against this cabinet. And mine had three rivets going from inside the kitchen cabinet into that lower bunk. Um, mine also, you can see where the fiberglass looks a little funny because it was actually, the cabinet was installed before this rail. Um, so depending what condition yours is in, this rail might actually be holding your cabinet in a little bit. Um, I was able to get mine out from underneath it because obviously my cabinet's not in great shape. And we will fix that later. So that was all that was holding mine in. I can't guarantee you that that's uh, exactly the same for everyone, but it should be pretty standard. Uh, once you get those out, you can remove the cabinet. Once you have the cabinet moved to the side, you can see that lower pan right there where it was riveted into. So that's all there was to taking mine out. Um, I can't guarantee that's gonna work for every single one. I don't know what uh, age yours is, but in mine, it was, it was fairly straightforward. Uh, but I think my cabinet's also been out before, so I don't know if there could be some fiberglass resin down at the bottom or what kind of flooring you might have that might be holding it up. Um, but, uh, once you get the five rivets along the bottom and the screws along the back out, uh, it should be fairly straightforward to come out. Uh, the other question I got this week was about removing the closet. And uh, I've pulled this trim piece off of the door a little bit to expose this rivet row because these rivets run really close to the edge of the door frame. And then this rivet row holds in the other side and it goes up pretty high on the shelf. So I've got some of them drilled. Uh, I'm going to uh, continue drilling them out and see if we run into anything. Uh, we were originally talking about leaving the closet in place and painting it there, but as we've gotten into our repairs and prepping the other cabinets for paint, we've just found that it's gonna be easier to take these out as well, both the kitchen upper that we were gonna leave and the closet, prep them all out of the trailer and put them back in so we can do all the repairs properly. We didn't want to come all this way and uh, then wish a little bit down the road that we'd, you know, done, gone just a little bit farther. So we are going to pull our closet and we'll see if we run into anything. One note about taking your closet out is the closet's one of two supports on the inside of the scamp, at least, that help to give some rigidity to the shell. The closet is one side and then the kitchen and the upper cabinet with the brace. The brace is important. I know a lot of people want to remove that so it opens it up and it feels a little bit more open because it's a small space. But that brace is important. It gives that rigidity to the outer fiberglass shell. Um, so if you're planning on taking your closet out and uh, not putting it back in, doing a layout change of some sort, you need to figure out some way to add some more rigidity and make some supports internally. Um, so for us, we're just taking it out gonna repair it and we'll put it back in later. 
So just a quick word to any of you that uh, may be thinking about tackling a trailer like this, uh, but uh, aren't familiar with how they're put together. They're put together with pop rivets, and if you don't know what those are, they're a blind fastener, which means you only need to access one side of the hole, and they are non-reusable, so you have to drill them out. They have a little st stem on them, and the stem goes into a tool like this. This is a typical uh, pop rivet squeezer, and you would stick your rivet through the hole. You want to make sure the two surfaces that you are riveting together are held tight, whether with a clamp or whatever, um, when you do this so that um, you don't end up with a gap and the, the rivet squeezes at the right spot. And then you stick the stem in the tool like this, you put the rivet through the hole, and then you pump it until the rivet snaps. The stem will break off when it gets the proper amount of compression. And uh, they're, they're pretty good. They have a tendency to work out in fiberglass over the years. That's why a lot of my holes are, are uh, larger than they should be and we're having to do some repairs. So we're repairing them, then redrilling the proper size and uh, putting new rivets back in to hold all our cabinets in when we go back together. I also prefer this. This is a pneumatic riveter. It does the same thing as this, but you just hook an airline up to it, pull the trigger, and done. There's no repetitive motion with your hand uh, because some of the more structural rivets can you have to squeeze pretty hard to get them to uh, to set. This is a little bit more expensive. This guy's just from Harbor Freight. It's a central pneumatic. Um, so depending if this is your only project or not that you might be using prop rivets may or may not worth be worth the investment for you but uh, they're pretty handy if you're doing a lot of pop rivets. All right, so to remove the rivets, you have to drill them out, like I said. Uh, so you want to get on the head side, which is the side with a little hole in it, and get a drill bit that's about the same, same size as the drill bit shank. A lot of these smaller ones are uh, number fours, so they are an eighth of an inch, so about an eighth of an inch drill bit. And uh, then you have to drill the head off carefully. You don't want to blow through it because... Um, you don't want to damage the fiberglass hole, um, so you do it carefully, and when the head pops off, like that, then you take a punch and you have to drive the tail side through the fiberglass. Um, and obviously you want to do that pretty carefully so you don't damage the fiberglass again. The nice thing is with the pop rivets, they have that hole in the head side, uh, so they kind of center themselves, so they're pretty easy that way. But you just want to drill the head off. Um, with the bigger ones, I like to use a drill bit that is um, a little bit smaller than the shank, and I like to drill all the way through it, and that kind of weakens the structural integrity, so it doesn't take as much effort when I take a punch and punch it through. Um, and that way I'm less likely to damage the fiberglass. So I drill through it with a, with a drill bit that is smaller than the shank and then use a larger one to take the head off then drive it through. So one thing you may run into is a rivet like this that when you go to drill it out it just wants to spin and obviously you don't want it spinning very much because the more it spins the more it's just gonna wobble and enlarge that hole. So uh, one way you can deal with it is get a putty knife and uh, obviously depending on what the surface is you don't want to damage the surface but you can kind of wedge the head out and then very carefully there we go and you have to drill the head off so um, yeah using a putty knife it, it's not great but uh, sometimes it's necessary. If you can get to the backside, you have another person, you can get a pair of uh, pliers on it and get them to hold the tail side. Uh, that's another way to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, you don't want those spinning and obviously you can't drill them out if they just sit there and spin when you're trying to drill. <laughs> My final fastener is actually a, a nut and bolt. Um, or a machine screw and a, and a nut on the inside. I'm reaching through the door right now to take it off. Um, 
like I said, through the years, I think as some of the, uh, the rivets either got loose or came out, broke off, whatever, the, one of the uh, previous owners just replaced with some, you know, miscellaneous hardware or whatever they had. So, uh, depending how old your trailer is, you may have some of this nonsense as well. All right, so I've got a small hammer and a uh, punch that's just a little bit smaller than the rivet. And what you want to do is just go ahead and you hear the uh, tail hit the floor inside. Just go ahead and tap those rivets through to the inside. So the back side of my closet was riveted with uh, larger size rivets than the front side around the door front ones are smaller get a different pin punch these rivets all right there's just one final rivet it is right here above this post sticking out above the light and that rivet holds the uh, closet bar Now the closet bar should come with the closet. All right, so some of these smaller ones around the door frame were holding pretty good, and I did end up going back and re-drilling some of them with a smaller drill bit. Like I said, you wanna go through the center of them, weaken their integrity without damaging the fiberglass. Uh, so the final thing is the door strike here for the lock. Uh, it's got screws coming from the inside to be out holding the strike on. So in theory at least, that's everything holding the closet in place. Um, the wires for our light were already cut, uh, so we'll deal with that later. But uh, should be able to work our closet just forward like that. Pick it up a little bit to get it off the floor. And take it straight out the door. So I really hope this uh, little overview of how to remove the cabinets uh, helps some of you guys, specifically you, Mark and Bob. Uh, we really appreciate you guys reaching out and interacting with us. If you have any questions uh, like they did, send us an email. Our email is in our about and in the description of all our videos. Or leave a comment on these videos. We try to respond to all the comments in one way or another. So if you have questions, let us know. We'll try to address them. Um, the fiberglass cabinets in these trailers are great and uh, they're part of the appeal and the uniqueness of what a scamp is. So we really wanted to take them out in good shape um, and do the repairs and put them back in. Um, and it sounds like these, uh, these other guys are trying to do that as well. So uh, we hope that uh, if you're considering doing a project on your scamp or you are doing a project on your scamp that this uh, maybe helped you out a little bit. Uh, the only ones we didn't talk about are like the dinette and they're anchored basically the same as the front bunk, uh, screws into a plywood rail and then rivets into the cabinets adjacent and the uh, back of the trailer. So um, really pretty, fairly straightforward, at least in my trailer, like I said. Um, can't make broad sweeping statements because I, I haven't seen all of them. The other thing I will mention is these plywood rails are not in great shape on mine. They're kind of saggy. I have a plan formulating in my brain how to address that and give them some stability. Um, so if yours are in bad shape, stay tuned. I will have a repair for that coming in a future video. And um, like I said, uh, we have an update video coming. You may have noticed some of the repairs that I, we haven't covered in any of our other videos. Windows missing, stuff like that. And uh, don't worry, that'll all be in the update video. We've gotten good video. I just wanted this video to be specifically about removing the cabinetry and how we did that. So if this helped you, let us know in the comments and uh, we appreciate you watching. We'll put some more videos right here that you can watch um, more of our, our Scamp Renovation series and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Garage Miss Adventures.